Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and strap yourselves in because we've got a double edition of This Week in EDM because I missed last week's stuff. So we've got 61 songs I want to talk about, as always there in the Spotify link down below. And uh, ooh, yeah, use those uh, chapter markers as much as you need to uh, find each song we're going to talk about. So here we go. Got something from every category this week. We're starting off in the trash category as a reminder. Uh, these are just my opinions, so don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Vicstar and Mast Wolf featuring Jamie with Know Me Better. I did a whole video on this track. If you want to see that, I'll try to remember to link it up in one of the things here. But uh, yeah, I thought this was one of Monster Cat's weakest songs in the last couple years. The Slap House production is bland and boring, and the vocals are literally nonsensical. So that's my opinion on that. And as we hop into the bad category, that was it. Just one song I thought in trash. Uh, more songs I think are bad. Again, reminder, just my opinion. Uh, but we've got Riot 10 with Feral. Uh, this is a super bland rhythm with questionable mixing at best. Uh, the second drop is a very interesting choice stylistically. I thought overall the song was just uh, just messy. Then we got Jack Back, who is David Guetta and Themba with Give Me Something to Hold. Uh, I do applaud David Guetta for making something that isn't a cheesy cover, albeit on a second kind of alias. But um, yeah, this is a pretty lifeless progressive house track. Uh, it's trying to be nostalgic, but it doesn't bring in any modern mixing. It sounds like a random CD I would have in my car from 2010 that I would just pop in and be like, oh, the, this is like fine, but it's not great. Then we got Rehab and Jason Derulo with Animal. Uh, pretty laughable track, honestly. Uh, it's boring. It's derivative. The lyrics are silly. I do not care for this at all. Then we got Black Tiger Sex Machine featuring Panther with Zombie X O Fortuna. Uh, this just feels unnecessary. Uh, there's no shortage of orchestral dubstep fusion out there, and this one just doesn't hit. It's too short, and the rapping doesn't gel with the rest of the track either. So, not a fan of that. Then we got Cyclops with Nope, uh, very much a signature Cyclops track with your kind of one-two headbanger bass line and stuttering synth melody, but um, the song just feels a bit gimmicky for my liking and lacked any real depth in its production and or meaning. So uh, yeah, not a fan. Then we got Pixel Terror and Depoli with Reasons. Uh, Pixel Terror is moving strongly into metal step territory with this, and I don't think it's a great sound for him. Uh, and that ending, I don't really get either you either go fully at the kind of like fake screamo finale there or just don't do it at all i don't know what the point of this like 10 second outro is i didn't get it wasn't a fan of this then we got Kygo featuring Zach Abel and now Rogers for life. Uh, Kygo's turn um, to be, I guess, David Guetta. Uh, I, I I don't know. He's just <laughs> making all these covers and mixes of older tracks now too, Kygo. And um, yeah, this is this is kind of a mix of uh, Mojo's uh, Lady, Hear Me Tonight, um, the original song there. But uh, yeah, uh, let's just stop doing this. We are ruining good old music um, and also super underutilizing uh, Abel and Rogers. I just, I don't get this one. We're moving into the meh category, songs that I thought were pretty meh. We've got Hyperbeam, which is the combo of Odd Mob and Omnom with Reading My Mind from the new Unexplained EP. Uh, kind of dry tech house that manages to be quite repetitive for such a short track. I uh, didn't really care for this one a ton. We've got OK By Myself from the new Future Unfold EP. I didn't mind the production on this track, but thought it was because uh, I thought it was OK's kind of signature future bass sound, which I do enjoy. Uh, but man, the singing was just not there for this. Um, both the vocal mixing and the performances uh, just fell super flat for me. Then we got Wales and Medic with Mess. Um, wow, this song goes through a bunch of different styles and tones in the span of just a couple minutes. You've got heavy bro step, minimalistic techno, electropop sounding verses, and a hardcore, like, hardstyle finale. Um, it's an interesting track because I enjoy the individual sections, but together I just don't think they mesh that well. So that's going to land here in meh. Then we got The Chainsmokers and Friday with... Friday. Uh, I mean, the song is literally just Roses 2.0. It's the exact same melody, just pitched down. Um, but I mean, it, it's not horrible. In fact, I think I prefer the kind of pitched down Chainsmokers production. And so uh, more of this, I guess. Then we got Raise Hell and Cloud Zero with Fastest. Uh, pretty fine funk bass house fusion of a track. Um, but I didn't really feel like it overly differentiated itself from the rest of the funk pack uh, for me to want to go back and revisit this one in particular. Then we got Jace Proctor and Beast Boy with Cursed Rodeo from Jace Proctor's new Death Reincarnate EP. Uh, this is a bit of the by the numbers heavy rhythm with some okay mixing on the drop sections. I'm curious to see where uh, Jace Proctor will go with his sound design in the future, and especially listening to stuff that isn't uh, <laughs> doesn't have Beast Boy on it. The rest of the EP I haven't dove into exactly yet, but um, yeah, up and coming artist with uh, Jace. So go check him out if you want to listen to some more rhythm. 
Then we got Armin Van Buren and DoD featuring Laura Welsh with Buy Now. This is just a simple progressive trance track that's really too short for its own good. Then we got Slander and William, Back, William Black featuring Jordan Shaw with Keep You Warm. Yes, it's melodic dubstep. Yes, it's basic as hell. No, I have nothing more to say about it. Then we got Sapien Dream with the Past Lives Tokyo Machine remix. Um, first of all, this is a remix of a cover song from an artist's secondary alias, Sapient Dream being slushy. Um, so there's a lot happening here, but overall, I thought this remix was unnecessary. The production wasn't all that complex to really warrant this remix, and I think Tokyo actually uh, played it pretty safe here. Then we got Coven and AMC with Hooked. I wasn't really feeling this new Coven and AMC track as much. Uh, Katie's vocals weren't as full as I would have wanted, and the kind of screechy synth on the drops just weren't really my cup of tea, so I didn't enjoy this one as much. Then we got Affinity featuring Meg and Dia with Gravity. The Lunar One EP is out now from Affinity. And um, don't really have anything super negative or super positive to say about this track in particular. I think it's kind of just a standard electro pop cut with a simple beat and catchy vocal melody. This is like the epitome of, of meh for me is this one. Then we got Boombox Cartel featuring Famous Dex with Can't Talk, a very rigid hybrid trap cut um, that is seemingly a part of some larger upcoming project from Boombox Cartel, hopefully. I thought Famous Dex's vocals were a touch underutilized here, uh, but overall found the track to be a little lackluster for my liking. Then we got Amnes and Emski with Paradox, uh, a deep trap cut with a simple beat and unique sound design. Um, all that being said, though, the song doesn't really go anywhere, and it's super short, and I thought the lyricism was a bit odd. So I thought it had the good stuff going for it, but in the end, I was okay on it. We got Nurko and Dace Williams with If the World Was Ending, a bit of a double throwback and kind of copycat track this one feels like. The first half is pretty much like early days Elenium, and then the second track is like a, or like Avicii, like an old school Avicii. You literally get hit with like a 2010s melodic dubstep and then like a 2010s commercial house track. So I just don't really get it. Um, it just feels like a copycat of two other artists. So I, th I think it's meh. Then we got Pauline Her and John Casey featuring Tara Jr. with Exercise Me um, from the new Collision EP from Pauline Her and John Casey. Uh, this is a fun mix uh, of light vocal chops and hi hats and a darker bass line that kind of adds a nice dichotomy of a high low here. But um, yeah, not the most interesting or exciting track to date, um, but it does have its place. Um, and also the outro feels wrong. Like it feels like it's not supposed to be there and like they it's just a production error. But um, that's neither here nor there. We got Joe B and Stevie G, STVG, I'm not sure, <laughs> with Froobs. Uh, typically, uh, yeah, you get this destructive rhythm from Joe B at this point as he continues to pioneer in a space that desperately needs some of it. And um, that being said, I do think this is one of his weaker tracks as of late, uh, leaning too far away from the more melodic side of things in favor of a relatively repetitive, repetitive midsection. So. We got Dion Timmer with Way Too Close. Uh, heavy dubstep from Dion Timmer is often a big turnoff for me. I like his more kind of melodic stuff, but uh, this is some of his best in that area, albeit still uh, a fairly by the books dubstep track. I uh, don't think it's all that bad. Then we got Lemater with Forever, a classic funky electro tune from Lemater as they begin this kind of new era of production, but um, it's not quite a new tonal era as the song sounds way too much like Pixel Heart, one of their singles that came out, uh, I think, in 2022, I want to say. Um, it's like the exact same melody, vocal inflection. It's like pretty much a copycat of it, and uh, like I like Pixel Heart, and so I like this song, but it's just it's weird. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've got Wooly and Samplifier with Acid, a pseudo rhythm track that turns in like into a techno back half. Um, I'm actually quite impressed they managed to make this sound the way they did, and that I actually uh, kind of enjoyed this one. This isn't normally my uh, my taste. Then we got the Fat Rat and Rael with Myself and I, a driven house beat with angelic vocals, um, and all which kind of makes for this very serene and heavenly song. Uh, typically, the Fat Rat struggles to keep these sounding, these like angelic sounding songs uh, pretty clean, but I think he does a great job on this one with it. Then we got Faint with Hope I Did Okay, high energy liquid dump, drum and bass from Faint as per usual, solid track, nothing out of the ordinary from Faint, kind of just doing what he does best, does he, doing what he does best. Then we got Petite Biscuit and Cub Sport with I Forgot What's Love, a low-key electropop song with nice light vocals and a simple garage-style beat, uh, one that I think works really well in a lot of contexts. We got Golden Features with uh, Flesh, the Slumberjack remix, uh, a solid, well-paced-out kind of jungle house remix and that does add a ton of energy to the, to the original. Uh, not the most grand of remixes, but the production was really nice and clean on this.
Then we've got the Busted by Hero Bus, Someone to Forget remix, originally by Arm & Hammer and Lights. Uh, the Together as One remix is from Arm & Hammer is out now. And um, yeah, this is a really, this track in particular has a really playful synth lead uh, with a like, super bouncy and sporadic lead line. Um, a solid, rem solid remix for sure. And I'm really happy that uh, they kind of had uh, extended out and, and lengthened out the, uh, the drop sections. Then we got the Must Die remix of Play With Fire, originally by Oliverse. Uh, yeah, screechy dubstep remix uh, with one big singular movement. Um, I might be It might be largely in part to Oliverse's original foundation of the track, but I thought this is uh, some of Must Die's best, like, purely dubstep tracks I've heard from him in a while, so I enjoyed it. Then we got Tourist with Katha. Uh, yeah, the Monday morning LP is out now, and this cut is a spacey, atmospheric, almost like old school sounding progressive house track. And if that is up your alley, go listen to this for sure. And we got Pretty Girl with Higher. We've got uh, yeah, a simple deep house track here that isn't too out there or super unique, but um, still a solid, great, well produced track. Then we got Casbo with Resonarin. Uh, continually, his like slew of progressive house tracks are just being dropped one after another because this album is that sound. And uh, this track in particular is like a seven-minute journey of a single from his upcoming LP. Um, it's a really neat track with a great atmosphere, but didn't quite, I feel like, justified its length uh, with a fairly linear structure, uh, all things being considered here. Then we've got Igloo Ghost with New Species, glitchy electronic single from his forthcoming LP that's coming out soon. Um, tons of vocal chops, syncopated beats, and walky, wonky elements all throughout. Then we got Mern with Close the Distance, a longer atmospheric driving progressive house track with a simple melody and clean sound design. Um, yeah, Mern is just doing what Mern does. And we've got Have, Roy Knox, and Skyle with Hideaway. Uh, this is more of like a melodic drum and bass uh, track with uh, from this trio with great vocals from Skyle that really enhance that kind of bright melodic tone that, uh, that Have and Roy Knox bring to the production side, which is, uh, yeah, a lot lighter than they normally have, uh, all, all two, three of them, I guess. We've got Johns and Party Favor with Dead Weight. Uh, I honestly think uh, there's been a real lack of this kind of trap this year so far. Um, it's not so much hi-hat focus, but more of like a melodic focus here on the drops. And I kind of miss this style of trap, uh, something about it. Um, it just kind of is like comfort music or comfort food to me. And uh, I was really happy to hear this one. Then we got Hyper Potions and Milk with Night Drive from the new Champo 2 DLC. And this is just a vibe of a track. You've got an uplifting horn section finale, fun synth runs, and solid vocals. This is a great start to the new season of DLC. Then we got Ace Aura with Doorman. Uh, Ace Aura has uh, always had this like sonically static sound to his production, uh, but this track takes that notion to a whole new level. It's almost as if every single element is being played through like a loose aux chord, uh, and it honestly kind of slaps. Um, Ace is kind of honed in a lot more on the high end of this track, uh, and it's a kind of subtle switch up of his sound design that uh, I quite enjoyed. Then we got No Mana with Lost Call from the new double-sided single with an album coming out soon from No Mana as uh, he kind of strips back a lot of the fancy production for this track, in particular on Lost Call, uh, for a more straightforward kind of clean-cut Electro House track uh, with this one. Um, the album is coming soon, and I'm super excited about it. We got AU5, Laura Brem, and Evoke with Empty Space, a more commercialized melodic dubstep sound with a four on the floor kick that keeps the track moving and driven the whole time. Uh, AU5 just doesn't miss, and the amount that he's been putting out lately is, is, is kind of crazy. We, we're eating good. Then we got Dimension and Alice in Wonderland with Satellite. Uh, Speed House with a flair for 90s Eurodance was not what I expected to hear from this one, um, and it's kind of just a straight bop. Lots of energy, lots of fun. Really enjoying this one. Then we got Delta Heavy featuring Cameron Warren with Bad Decisions, a brooding and intense DNB uh, cut here with its kind of uh, classy, crunchy synth hits from Delta Heavy. Uh, one of the better Delta Heavy cuts as of late, as I also think Cameron Warren brought a ton of energy with his vocals as well. So good one here. Then we got Wave Dash, Anamanaguchi, and Kayan? 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 I don't know how to say that, but uh, be all right. Uh, third single from an upcoming album from Wave Dash. Uh, and this is a unique one for sure, as the verses are like stylistically empty, focusing in on the vocals while the drops are these kind of sustained stutters that, stutters that feel very weighty to them. So I like this one quite a bit. 
Then we've got the return. Uh, Nigel Good and Tien Vet Nugent with The Magic. Uh, Nigel Good is back after way too long of a hiatus for the first single of an upcoming album. And uh, while I did enjoy it, I didn't feel like it individually stood out or felt as strong as a majority of the tracks on Space Cadet, his last album did. But um, yeah, Nigel's uh, DNB production is smooth and well-crafted. And I uh, did think the vocals were a touch too weak and took away from the track a little bit. Uh, but I'm really excited to see what's coming down the pipeline later on uh, here. So I was a little little more uh, critical of this one, I think, than others. Speaking of that, we've got Porter Robinson with Knock Yourself Out XD. Uh, this is one that I really wouldn't technically say is EDM. It probably is just straight pop or... Yeah, it's more pop than anything, but um, yes, obviously it's Porter Robinson, so we're going to talk about it. The second single from Porter's upcoming album, Smile, is here, and uh, he's kind of just showing off that he doesn't care what anyone thinks. Um, this track is bright, full of energy, and lands primarily within that kind of bit pop sound. Um, yeah, it's a great track, but I think a little underwhelming of a single for me personally. So I enjoyed it, but uh, not as much as Cheerleader. I loved Cheerleader. They've got Cone Sound with Luminary from the new Evocation EP. And uh, yeah, this is another beautiful track with a heavenly piano and grand strings. Um, this one in particular also isn't really strictly EDM, uh, but boy, it is a fantastic track. Then we got more Kismet with How to Build a Better Boy. Uh, man, uh, this is like a half color house, half hard color bass mix. Um, that is just another beautifully crafted and well mixed more Kismet track. Um, yeah, they just pump out so much great sound design and intricate elements that uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Then we've got the Camouflage remix of Set the Roof, originally by Hudson Mo Mohawk and Nikki Nair. Uh, Camouflage absolutely crushes this remix with an intense garage garage drum kit uh, production and pitched vocal chops. Uh, it's a more fuller sounding Camouflage track, which I think lends itself originally to the, I guess, the original track more. But um, yeah, it's a little bit more atypical for his sound, but damn, this thing hits. Then we've got Kaiza with The Mysterious Disappearance of Etta Place, a uh, narratively driven track with a dense storyline and solid Deep House production. Uh, this new LP from, or EP, I don't know what it is from Kaiza, is shaping up to be really, really interesting. There's some songs I really like, some I really don't like, and so I'm intrigued to hear that, but... Then we got Jero and Casbo with How Does It Feel. Uh, while that's, this may not be on the Casbo album cycle, it is coming on some whatever upcoming Jero project of sorts. But uh, yeah, this could very much live on either of those albums personally. It's the kind of same old driven progressive house songs or style that we've been getting from Casbo on his stuff. But um, yeah, I actually think this is one of my favorite tracks that Casbo has touched in the last couple months. Um, this sounds as if like you're watching a sunrise, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, it. Hopefully that makes sense. That metaphor makes sense. But Then we got Cosmos Midnight with Telephone, another Cosmo killer. A funky production and an earworm of a melody makes it for, or makes for another incredibly well-produced uh, and sounding track from Cosmos Midnight. They just don't hit, they hit, they hit, they don't miss. They hit, they hit, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Cosmos Midnight, it's great. Then we got Jaws and Nev with Chains. I'm surprised this is as far up the list as it was for me. Uh, Jaws has a stuttering future-based track that kind of came out of nowhere. I hadn't been loving Jaws and stuff as of late, but um, this sound is one that I deeply resonate with. Uh, he managed to throw in a third drop too, despite a just under or just around three minute runtime. Uh, and this one, this one goes hard and I enjoy it quite a bit. This is a sneaky one for sure. Then we got Weirmir with Creep. Uh, this is a cover of Rady Hood's iconic Creep track. And um, yeah, so this is a more vocally driven track as the original is. And just like the original, this song is fantastic. Um, I think he's at the top of his game vocally here, Weirmir. And um, the subtly intense production plays a beautifully supportive role uh, to the track as well. So I think this, uh, this cover is right up his alley and I think it's fantastic. Then we're moving into the standout category. We've got four songs in standout from these last two weeks. Uh, we've got the live VIP from of Forgive Me by Odessa featuring Izzy Bizu. And uh, yeah, first things first, Odessa Live is on another level. If you can go see them live, do it. Um, this live rendition is one of their best, I think I've heard. Um, the added horn section finale, um, just or added horn section and the finale, I guess, separately. Um, and Izzy's vocals sound even better live than they do in the original mix. So um, this is how you do a live track for sure. Then we got Dyadic and Butte Noise with Body flicker the third kind lp by dyadic is out now and uh this track in particular was an absolute blast it's a heavy and forceful halftime track with a subtly funky backing beat and 
um, yeah, this is just one of my like kind of instant favorites right away. You listen to it, you're like, oh my gosh. Um, this actually sounds a lot like uh, the Mr. Bill album of recent. So if you haven't heard the dyadic one, but you've heard Mr. Bill, go listen to at least this song in particular. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. And penultimately, we've got Justice and Tame Impala with Never Ender from the new Hyper Drama LP out now from Justice. Um, you can't go wrong with Justice and Tame Impala. The vocals are fantastic. The electro funk production is top notch as usual. And this is one of the best tracks from the LP, hands down. And finally, my number one song from the last two weeks in EDM is in fact Jamie XX featuring Honey Dijon with Batty on the Floor. I really love Jamie XX. Uh, he doesn't release often, but uh, he's definitely one of those quality over quantity artists for sure. Uh, this track is a funky house cut with pristine vocal chops and horn instrumentation. So, so good. Go listen to Jamie XX now. But uh, Other than that, that has been this week in EDM. I'd love to know what you guys have to say about any and all songs in the comment section below. And whoa, we're finally done. Thanks for <laughs> being along for this long journey. I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.